Hey y'all, it's Andrew Reed with Monster Creek Mushrooms and uh, Kevin and Big Tip. <laughs> Today on Contamination Management. <laughs> uh, I've just been working here with some shiitake blocks. We actually forgotten about these. We let them incubate a little bit too long. And uh, it's a strain that we're trialing called 3790. But the mushrooms are coming out really nice, really big, really beautiful. Um, I wish I would get uh, here that you get a better yield if you don't let it go quite as long as what we did. You get, uh, the longer you wait, you get bigger mushrooms and then uh, a fewer of them. And then with, uh, from my understanding, if you only do eight to 10 weeks on 3790, you get a lot smaller mushrooms um, and a lot more of them. So uh, I'd like to try it out a few different ways, but since I'd forgotten about these and we just now started through these, we're getting the big ones. That said, uh, something I've noticed a lot with shiitake in my grow room is I keep getting all these little green mold spots, right? You don't want those on your mushrooms. Um, years ago, I had a mentor named Hugh Brewer, and uh, I had asked him about this with uh, when we were using 3782. And he was like, oh, just uh, buy a butane torch and burn them. So that is uh, now what we do. So with the shiitake, when you get all these little green spots, what's interesting is mold is a surface grower, right? Those little green spots are really only growing on the surface. They have some little hyphae that they're probably sending down into the substrate, but it's not like mycelium where mycelium can grow in a deep substrate um, and go really far below the surface. I mean, that's really where mycelium does its job. That's really where it shines is when it can outpace mold and get to an environment that is inhospitable to the mold. But on the surface of our blocks, that's a hospitable place. Now, the good news is with the fire, mycelium you might kill what is on the surface which is what you want with the mold but you're not killing the mycelium deep underneath also you know you're not really worried about preserving these blocks we're going to fruit them we're going to harvest them here in a little bit uh, in another day or two and then that's it but i don't want that mold spreading to my caps i don't want uh, i'll show you here in a second oftentimes you'll see the mold growing where the cap is touching the sides of the block um, I don't want any of that stuff, so I want to manage that contamination. I'm not trying to eliminate contamination. I don't think it's going to be gone forever. It's going to come right back. But the good news is that if we can uh, help get rid of that, uh, help knock it back, then we have enough time to harvest some really nice looking mushrooms and go from there. So, I mean, it's very, very simple. I will say, do the, I'm doing this outside of my grow room because when you burn mycelium, it smells like burnt hair. So. I mean, it's really simple. I've got three different options I'm going to show you here. I'll link all three down below in the description. You have something just like a butane torch, right? It's a nice blue hot flame. Um, I like this a lot for working around the lab because it's small. Um, you also have like a regular like benzomatic plumbing torch. Um, we've used these quite a few times. I mean, we've used these for years just with the little standard, the standard valve. And then you can just use that and burn without having to pull a trigger or anything um, after that. And then what I've started using recently was the, uh, I got another Benzomatic, but it's with a camping propane because it sits better, a little heavier. And I like this a lot. The flame's a little too big for precision work though, so I actually use this in the lab to blast my scalpel um, far more than I would use it very much on the shiitake. Uh, I don't want to burn my mushrooms to a crisp, but I actually really like the butane a little better um, just because it's pinpointed. So, I mean, you can go to it, lock it in place, and now it's burning all the time. Please keep in mind that if you're fruiting shiitake like I am, you're going to have plastic right here on the very bottom because I always just cut until I, I leave the very pla bottom plastic, uh, very bottom of the bag on like a plastic tray. That really encourages the mushrooms to grow up and around instead of down. Uh, in between these metal slats. And I do prefer growing shiitake on the metal shelves instead of my PVC shelves. Because shiitake is messy, number one, I can take this out and pressure wash it when we're done. And number two, with the mold and everything that we're burning off, I don't want this flame coming near plastic. So do not catch your operations on fire with this. You are taking your own liability. I am warning you, do not do what I do. But this is what I do. So, <laughs> um, but it's, it's very simple, you just take it, and you just burn. Burn that mold spot off. I'll get the camera, make sure I get some B-roll of that for you guys. Um, you are most certainly, when you have that hot air, 
meeting that mold colony, you are most certainly blowing mold spores everywhere. Another reason not to do this in your grow room, if you can roll it out and burn these spots off and roll it back in, you're golden. Um, that said, I have done it in my grow room, which is also another reason why I've always used my, I place my shiitake blocks near the ventilation. That way if mold spores are flying off, they're going right out my ventilation and not blowing into the rest of the grow room. So, um, <clears throat> again, just a really quick tip for the day. Use fire and kill it with fire, right? Um, I like this over spraying my blocks with any chemical sprays. I like it over spraying, um, oh gosh, what people use, I've seen people use bleach and alcohol and I actually just prefer the flame. The flame is quicker, it's a little easier, and as long as you handle it safely and appropriately, you're not gonna have any real issues. Um, do not catch your plastic on fire. Do not catch your plastic on fire and leave that burning. Um, it will, it, you know, it's fire. It does what fire does. So, that said, you're not gonna catch your blocks on fire. Shiitake mycelium in particular is very, very fire resistant, um, as you'll see in this B-roll. Like, it does not light up at all, hardly. So, um, anyways, y'all, remember, when you're dealing with contamination, kill it with fire. Go all Terran on it. Kill it like you would Zerg. It's a StarCraft reference. Forget it. I'm, uh, I'm getting too nerdy for the day. So, as always, y'all, keep spawning culture, and uh, please hit that subscribe button.